Welcome everybody to another edition of Major League Wrestling, now in 2005, as we just finished Revolutions, and now we're on the road to Hybrid Hell, so let's get rolling with the first taping of Underground, um, and we start backstage basically with Jason Cross walking up to Matt Seidel and Val, who are of course upset after they lost their big main event against Loki at Revolutions by the DVD, and you know, Cross basically says, you know, Seidel may be the junior heavyweight champion, but he hasn't defended that title against Cross, and you know, Seidel says, you know, is you still upset, and says, like, you know, yeah, I lost against the world champion, but I can sure as hell kick your whiny ass. Cross says, fine, then you're on. Next week, Cross says, eh, whatever, and then he walks off arm and arm with Val. Uh, this gets a 47, sets up a, you know, a, a decent match for, for next week as our main event, and gives Seidel a defense. So there we go. And we go on to our first match of the night, which is in a bout that had decent record in the crowd, but subpar wrestling. The Stampede Bulldogs of Harry Smith and TJ Wilson defeated Quance and Puma in 7-11 when Harry Smith pinned Bobby Quance. This gets a 40. TJ Wilson gets a 42. Harry Smith gets a 31. Quance and Puma get a 35 and 36, respectfully. Perfectly decent, like, you know, high-flying match to give the Stampede Bulldogs a win and some momentum. And then post-match, the Stampede Bulldogs celebrate to a pop from the crowd. And this gets a 38. So then we can go ahead and move backstage. Oh, oh, now first we have tag title highlights, because I'm basically going over the big tag title match from Revolutions, where Kiwa Run Strong managed to survive and defend their tag titles against the Extreme Horseman team of Andrew Martin and Simon Diamond once again. Uh, this gets a 54, it's basically just a hype job. And then we go to a backstage promo, as basically we have featured attraction, the former NWA World Tag Team Champions, consisting of Jarrell Clark and Michael Shane, you know, going to the fact you know they attack Chris Hero and Roger Strong for one reason, prove that they're the best tag team in the business today, and that they know they had to come to Major League Wrestling and take the belt off of Hero Strong to prove it, and there's no other way to get the attention of the champs than to kick their ass. And you know, Michael Shane says, you know, you're starting to want to talk to their active great wrestlers. Well, great wrestling is in my bloodline, and Jarrell is the greatest high flyer in the world today. So we'll take those belts off you and prove that we should be the featured attraction here in Major League Wrestling. Okay, promo, and, you know, sort of sets that up as this gets to 838. And then in a belt that had good, heat, and decent wrestling, Jerry Lynn defeated Lightbringer in 750 by pinfall of Cradle Power Driver. This gets a 50. I basically just gives a little momentum back to Lynn. And honestly, um, as fun as it was to do the character for him with, for a few months, like, I don't have much to do with uh, Lightbringer slash Crowbar slash Diamond Storm, so he sort of gets to devolve into the mid card morass to, like, into their idea for him. Um, so he does the drop here, Lynn gets a 42, Lightbringer gets a 51, and then we move forward as, you know, Lynn starts cutting promo about being back on the comeback trails, and he says it was disappointing. Oh, right. I totally messed up the... <sighs> See, you gotta remember these things. What's the actual... Ma no. Anyway, uh, Jerry, you know, Jerry Lynn talks about, like, you know, he wants to get back on the comeback trail, and, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he thanks Eddie Blue for teaming with him, and then out come Ray Gordy, Vetter, Reeves, and Nikki Rocks, better known as Diamond Daisies. They basically make fun of Lynn, tell him that, you know, he, you know, he's old news, it's not 1998 anymore, it's almost, you know, the second half of the 2000s, and it's time for men like Ray Gordy and Vetter, who are stars both in and out of the ring, to be at the top of Major League Wrestling, unlike an old... An old man who still thinks that Def Leppard is a cool band. You know, Lynn says, okay, punk, you want to try me? Come, you know, come get some. And, you know, Vedder is like, nope, come on. Uh, we're not signed to wrestle this week. But, you know, come find us and actually make a match. And I'll be happy to prove to you that there's a reason why we're not only one number one on the charts, but number one in these fans' hearts. Q fan boost. As this gets a 38. As we move forward and this sets up, you know, a new feud. And then uh, we basically have, you know, some Nigel homicide highlights from the pay-per-view, including, you know, Nigel going w over, and, you know, again, buy the DVD, please, buy the DVD. For the love of God, buy the DVD. Uh, 43, call solid stuff. And then this goes to backstage where Loki and Nigel are backstage. Basically, you know, they go to the fact that, like, tonight they're teaming against the Dreams Horsemen. You know, Nigel's like, you know, once we get past tonight, you know, I'm going to ask MLW officials for a shot at you, Loki. And Loki says, you know, he respects that. You know, he's a warrior and he'll fight anybody. And it will be an honor to fight a true warrior who wants true competition. They shake hands. Everybody's happy as we go on to the match. And, you know, this promo gets a 61. And then we move forward. As then in a superb match, Andrew Martin and Simon Diamond defeat Loki and Nigel McGuinness in 1827 when Andrew Martin pins the world champion Loki with a pump handle slam. This gets a 60. Nigel gets a 57, Loki gets a 62, Simon Diamond gets a 54, Andrew Martin gets a 64. Huge, 
huge, huge moment here as, you know, Andrew Morton, like, you know, it's, I mean, they're heel teams where they cheat a little bit, but, you know, basically, Martin, you know, Nigel and Diamond Diamond, Simon Diamond are on the outside. Martin is able to hit the big boot, drop Loki into the huge pump handle slam, and then get the pinfall victory, and that's the show. So, yeah, gets a 52 overall, and, yeah, just a big old victory for uh, Andrew Martin, Simon Diamond, and Andrew Morton get a pin over the world champion. Truly might cause some shifting in who deserves the next title shot. But I'll be back in just a second with the next Underground, which will be main evented by Matt Saddle versus Jason Cross for the Junior Heavyweight title. Okay, time for the second show in the taping as we start off with the Extreme Horsemen backstage, basically celebrating their big win last week over Loki and Nigel. You know, Kareem got sprung with saying, you know, he's still unfortunately injured, but last night he proved, it was proven that the Extreme Horsemen is still the top group in professional wrestling and that Andrew Morton, Martin, but for everybody else, has passed the test and deserves a shot at Loki's MLW world title. And, you know, Simon Dine cuts and says, this is the greatest group of talent in this company. And it's only righteous that after we won at Revolution, defeating Lin Sabu, those two old extre extremists, that at Hybrid Hell, my man Andrew can take down Loki and, sh and show to him that a good big man will always take apart a good little man. So our promo gets a 65, and you know, sort of sets up that as sort of the big, um, you know, angle. Will Loki get the title shot, or what else will actually happen? Go ahead and go to our actual first match of the night as in a decent match, Future Detraction, which is in Jarrell Clark and Michael Shane, defeated the SAT in 1026 when Clark pinned Maximo with a 630 splash. This gets a 55, Jose gets a 49, Joel gets a 48, Jarrell Clark gets a 49, and Michael Shane gets a 55. Solid match and a good debut for Future Detraction as they get the big win over a former tag team champion and basically the finish is, you know. Uh, Michael Shane hitting a super kick because again he's HBK's nephew and Jarrell Clark hitting the 630 and they get the big win and then post match they celebrate to get a 47. Uh, then we have basically highlights from the you know from Revolutions between Brian Danielson and the Amazing Red 53 um, for you know the highlights again buy the DVD please buy the DVD. Uh, then we have a Junior Fat 2 promo where you know, he accepts that he lost versus ECMO, um, but he's still going to work to change ECMO even if he's, you know, officially now in charge of the family. And this gets 66 because, you know, Fat 2 is actually pretty damn uh, charismatic and over. But still, just straightforward promo continuing that, you know, stuff. Uh, then in a bout that had good heat and, and decent wrestling, Junior Fat 2 defeated Michael Modest in 650 by pinfall the Rikishi driver. Uh, this gets a 50, Modest gets a 36, Fat 2 gets a 54. Uh, basically, you know, unfortunately, even like a because I had said this as a wild brawl because of uh, you know product stuff. Um, so yeah, even a seven minute brawl is too much for a fat two, which is probably the downside. He's really charismatic, but he's like really old and getting really slow, which is unfortunate. But anyway, this gets a fifty, and then post match fat two celebrating gets a sixty three, and then we have a hero and strong promo backstage, which gets a forty six. Basically, they put over the fact that you know they're proud to be tag team champions. They defeat Lightbringer and Joker at the at, at Revolutions, and now they, you know, now they've got these new team feature distraction put in front of them. You know, they've seen them wrestle, you know, in other companies, but now you're in the major league of professional wrestling, and you know, they, they they've defended this. You know, they beat you know a, a high flying tag team in part for those belts. They defended against some of the best tag teams in the world. So if feature attraction want a shot, you know, come on up and prove yourself. Uh, this gets a 46. You know, and it's all stuff. And then in our main event. And he both had great heat and good wrestling. Matt Seidel to be Jason Cross in 1559 by pinfall with a dragon runner, Jesus Christ, after a distraction from Val. Uh, so basically a back and forth high flying match, but basically uh, Val distracts Cross just not long enough for Seidel to hit his few couple big moves in a row. And then Seidel hits him with a dragon runner to finish things off. And Matt Seidel makes defense number one of his MLW World Junior Heavyweight title. And this gets 65 overall. Uh, Seidel gets a 61, Cross gets a 53, and Cross and Seidel have great chemistry, which is something I either forgot or didn't think think of before I set this match up. So good stuff. And then of course post-match is Seidel and Val celebrating, but out comes Sanjay Dutt and he points at the title. And this gets a 54. So overall, match gets a 50, yeah, show itself gets a 58. Let's see if there's any mail to look at, and then we'll you know go to the next show of, not the next show, but the next set of underground tapings to finish things off. Here it says. Uh, nope, okay. Nothing specifically. 
Um, and yeah, nope, okay. So I'll be back in just a moment with the next set of tapings. Okay, it's now time for the next set of tapings for MLW Underground. We continue on the road to Hybrid Hell. We start out with an actual match to open up things up here tonight. As an adhesive match, Sanjay Dutt defeated Joker, inning 13 by pinfall to Bombay Splash. This gets a 43. Uh, Dutt gets a 58. Joker gets a 29. And unfortunately, as I think the... Yeah. Uh, Sanjay does sustain a bruised eye socket, so that's unfortunate. Um, also, with Jerry Lynn on the screen, it's good to let you know that um, on a different company show, Jerry Lynn got a torn quad, so he'll be out for eight months. I'm still going to keep him around because he's a good uh, road agent. But yeah, that sort of screws some of my booking up for the next couple months, especially in the mid card. Uh, so that the uh, Diamond Daisies versus Lynn and Sapu match is not going to happen. Um, also, like, to do some like long term booking, you know, when Carino gets back eventually, I was going to do the Carino win match that never happened because Carino got injured, but now Lynn is injured, so he'll be gone for a while. So it's just interesting, it's sort of like that match is really cursed. Anyway, it's gonna say 43. Oops, and Joker, yep, okay. And then we have a Dutt Sidel showdown. Basically, you know, Dutt makes belt motions, Sidel comes out, you know, they beat, and then they you know, basically yell at each other. You know, Dutt says, you know, he's a former champion, so he deserves another shot at the gold. Sidel says, yeah, you were champion, then you lost it. Um, and you know, he says, you know, he's the greatest junior heavyweight in this company today. And but if Dutt really wants to, you know, prove that he's a loser, he'll face him at Hybrid Hell and prove why he's the greatest junior heavyweight champion in Major League Wrestling. And Tante Jutt is just a punk. We'll go ahead and make that pre-booking official. We got Matty Seidel. That set up for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. And moving forward, I was going to go back to Dave. Everybody say Dynamite and Daisies. Um, talks about, you know, that, you know, Jerry Lynn was injured. But so just more proof that, you know, he's too old and should be, you know, put out in the back like Old Yeller. And it's time for the Young Guns of Professional Wrestling for both stars in and out of the ring to lead the way to the future. And Ray Gordy, it's easy to edit a new catchphrase. So, you know, I'll just actually continue that phrase is that like, you know, um, basically, you know, he's, you know, their, their greatness in the ring and greatness in, um, you know, they, they show greatness. No, yeah, Gordy, hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that because I actually came up with a decent line before, but now I can't quite get one. Oh, anyway, Federer, you know, says, you know, you know, so, but you know, they'll find another way to rise to the top even if Lynch is in, injured, and, you know, Gordy adds in that, you know, he, he has a family history of greatness in both music and wrestling, and this just proves that, you know, great greatness can strike twice. This gets a 43, solid promo. And then we have a, basically a squash match as Nigel McGuinness defeats Matt Martell in 419 by pinfall. Uh, this gets a 49, Nigel gets a 61, Matt Martell gets a 28, because it's just a straight head squash. Um, and yeah, just a win to get, give Nigel some momentum, since he, you know, um, basically has been sort of lost in the shuffle a little bit. And then Nigel celebrating afterwards gets a 64. Forward. And then in another squash match, in a decent match, Homicide, he hit Iceberg in 554 by pinfall, then 187. I actually doubt Homicide got him up for that move, but he beat him with something. Um, anyway, this gets a 49. Homicide gets a 47. Iceberg gets a 47 as well. Um, but yeah. Big win for a homicide as he, he continues, you know, on the comeback trail after losing to Nigel at, at Revolutions. And then Homicide Celebrant gets a 38. Uh, then Loki does a quick backstage promo where he says he's going to call out the Extreme Horsemen tonight. And he's going to answer them on who actually deserves a, a, a title shot at Hybrid Hell. So that gets a 71. It's just a really short promo. And then we get a basic announcement that... Um, basically, at the next set of TV tapings, the truth, Ron Killings, will appear. 55, as Killings is over. And then in a good match, the Amazing Red defeated Lightbringer in 12-11 by pinfall the Red Eye. So back and forth match, you know, uh, Lightbringer you know, tries to do his brawling. Amazing Red comes back with his, uh, you know, high flying. And then out of nowhere, Amazing Red hits the Red Eye and gets a pinfall victory with, I think that's the high flying move off the top, and gets a big pinfall victory. This gets a 59, which is actually a little better than I expected. Amazing Red gets a 61, Lightbringer gets a 46. And then out of nowhere, Lightbringer, you know, Amazing Red is celebrating his heart right win when Homicide runs in and just like 
kills anything around with a big clothesline, then hits him with the 187 and leaves him laying. As you know, the fact that you know both these men are from the same part of New York, so there might be something deeper going on, or maybe Homicide is just you know trying to make a name for himself once again after having the unfortunate loss to Nigel McGinnis at Revolutions. Then it's time for our main event segment, which gets a 70. So basically, you know, Luki comes down, the extreme horsemen, you know, come down all 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 of them, including Steve Carino, who's, you know, he basically now he's walking with a, a um I just forgot the word. The leg, uh not a brace. Um Anyway, yeah, Greeno has some crutches. I can't believe I forgot that word for a minute. Anyway, they walk down together. You know, they see, you know, three on one. And Luffy's like, says, you know, I'm not tired. Of, I know I'm not scared of any of you in the ring. That's why I called you out here. And, you know, he said he talked to MLW officials. And yes, there are many men who think they deserve the title shot. But the reality is, Andrew Martin pinned me right in the middle of the ring. So, on my honor, he gets a world title shot. But he also talked to MLW officials. And that if any of you lay down on him outside of the ring, Martin will lose his world title shot, and the Extreme Horseman will be suspended. And, you know, basically we come back, Karina says, you know, that's fine. Martin will just destroy you in the ring, improve once and for all the Extreme Horsemen are the greatest group in professional wrestling, and that he's passed the test, he's truly old school, and there's nothing you can do about it, you deep-voiced midget. So that's the thing Karina said. Then Senior Simon Take Mike says, Simon says, you can... You can think this is going to stop us all you want, but all it just means is going to be TikTok till your ass gets kicked. Like he says, so be it. And then, you know, basically walks away, holding the title up as the Extreme Horseman, you know, you know, Martin, and then Martin takes the mic as Loki Roseland says, you know, I usually like Carino and I'm do the talking since they like to do it, but let me be, let me be up, you know, let me be blunt with you. Your ass is mine at hybrid hell. So we'll go ahead and set that up. Loki, the world title, and there we go. The event show gets a 56, solid stuff, um, and then, you know, actually really good considering we didn't really have much of a mini event or much in the ring action. We had two squashes, a sort of disappointing uh, undercard match, and a decent main event, but nothing special. Maybe we'll be back with the final show the taping, and then we'll go from there. So we'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, now it's fine. time for the final show of the taping. As we start backstage, we're homicide because the promo, which gets a 36, unfortunately. It seems weird that his promos are getting worse, but I don't know. Maybe because he's Went from being its main event guys to now being its mid card guys. Regardless, anyway, Homicide cuts promo basis explaining, you know, yes, him and Red are from the same neighborhoods, but they're from different parts of the family. Homicide lived on the streets while well, Amazing Red was a little pampered baby because he was the youngest child. Well, now I want to, I want to train him in the ring to, to toughen him up. Yes, he's faced some great wrestlers, but he's never had a real fight here in Major League Wrestling, and he wants to bring that fight to him. Uh, this gets a 36. Like I said, not the greatest promo, but I also like set uh, rated homicide just on microphone, so that might have affected things as well. And then we have our opening uh, six-man tag to sort of build things up, which gets a 55 as in a good match. Matt Seidel and featured attraction of Gerald uh, Clark and Michael Shane defeated Sanjay Dutt in the tag champions. He runs strong in 15-14 when Michael Shane pinned Roderick Strong with a pitcher-perfect elbow drop. Uh, so basically, you know, back wild six way to end things after lots of high flying action, uh, hero hitting lots of wacky moves, strong hitting you know, his backbreakers, Dutt and Seidel flying around, Shane hitting super kicks. By the end, uh, you know, Shane is able to, you know, basically, you know, Clark hits a huge flying move on Strong, Shane hits the super kick, then hits the elbow drop and gets the pinfall victory over one half of the tag team champions. Uh, Matt Seidel gets a 61, Michael Shane gets a 57, Jarrell Clark gets a 47, Sanjay Dutt gets a 55, Roger Strong gets a 56, and Chris Hero gets a 47, and I'll go ahead and officially make the tag match for the, the um, for the, for Hybrid Hell, so it's going to be. Camp's yep, taking on Peter Traction with the Global Crown Tag titles on the line. And then the heel celebrant gets a fifty-six. 
Uh, then we have a quick segment where basically, you know, Diamond, Simon Diamond's backstage agent, and he's confronted by Nigel, uh, Nigel McGuinness. And basically, you know, they, they start arguing about, you know, Nigel says, like, you know, he's the one who deserves the title shot since he actually won his match in a singles match at, at Revolutions. And well, Diamond says, well, Simon says you should have actually made your case instead of teaming up with a low-key like a little bitch. Nigel just sort of punches them and the fight is on. And there we go, 66, really solid stuff. And then again, more hype for at the next TV taping. Uh, the last TV taping for Hybrid Hell, Ron Killings will be here. And then in a decent match, Ray Gordy and Vetter defeated the Hart Foundation of Jack Evans and Teddy Hart in 754 when Ray Gordy pinned Jack Evans with Country Thunder. I should probably change the name of that. As that gets a 50, uh, Vetter gets a 48, Ray Gordy gets a 53, Teddy Hart gets a 30, and Jack Evans gets a 44. A solid win for Ray Gordy and Vetter Vetti as they continue their role. Uh, Post match, we have Diana Mint and Daisy celebrating, which gets a 48 as they continue their ascent up the card. And yeah, side note, I've sort of been sort of screwed over Heart Foundation, but like honestly, they're too young, and like I like I know somebody said like you know I could just throw them in in in, uh, in dark matches, but like I don't like do that just because like you know I want to like sort of actually like build them up on TV. So you know, but what can you do? Um, limited time. And then we have a quick quote-unquote delirious quote-unquote promo well basically daisy challenge like well he talks about you know he's been in front of lots of good competition but he wants to get to the top and he's going to start his rise to the top yeah uh, you know at you know starting now and sooner or later he'll be fighting for the junior heavyweight title at all except for it's delirious so it's all screaming and wacky noises while daisy like waits and says it like sort of like you know like the hippie chick she is so like lots of total ease and likes and other stuff so sort of like me talking that is done as other people have said and then in our main event, which is sort of a random main event, and about had a great heat and decent wrestling, Simon Diamond defeats Junior Fat 2 in 11.58. Uh, basically, it says, you know, unheard of tactics, but he walled him with a chair because he's Simon Diamond. Uh, this gets a 54. Fat 2 gets a 49. Diamond gets a 50. Uh, they did not click, but still, match out of 50, of course, not the end of the world. And then Nigel wipes out Diamond to end things, uh, you know, basically, like, waffle offs from behind with a big clothesline from behind, and the brawl can use out to get a 53. And the show itself got a 53 overall. So yeah, not our best TV shows, but like I'm not like hyping them with like huge tag matches. We're just like really actually building up to the next show. Uh, let's see if there's any interesting news. Uh, then we'll sort of close things out with, um, you know, going over everybody's, you know, going through any specific overness changes. Then we'll go from there. Uh, okay, let's see here. Oh, let's see what TNA did with him. Wait. Oh, right. That was the other day. Okay, let's see here. Is Det actually injured seriously? Okay, he... Okay, so he'll just be a little hurt. Not the end of the world. So again, let's go over the roster real quick, just go over everybody's, like, see if there's any, oh wait, no, I'll be back in just a second with the end of the month stuff, which one will go over the overness, so I'll be back with you in just a moment. So, at least start July, just a couple things to go over, uh, first in the Southeast Regional Battle we finished first, and in the Tri-State we finished fourth, so, you know, makes sense. Also, it's the middle, middle of the year, so lots of stuff happening here, but no big deal. Also, A-Train is the newest, new U.S. champion. Um, so there you go. Anyway, so just go over our roster real quick as far as overness. So if you go to first, major stars. Uh, let's see if we look at Martin. He's been holding steady for the past couple months. Um, you know, lost a little bit from doing jobs, but still pretty over, which is why he's in the main event. Averno, who's busy in uh, AAA at the moment, so I'm not doing a ton with him in CML. Um, so if you look at his popularity, in the U.S. at least, like, yeah, he's been going up slightly, but, you know, has to still work at it. Still, but still a lot more over than when he started at. Albert Hannison, who was in New Japan for the last taping. Again, he's one of our most over guys. He's getting up to either the mid or high or low 50s pretty much everywhere. Uh, Ekmo, after his big win over Junior Fatu. And everything else is up to either low 50s or high 40s, so he's getting there as well. I have something important to do eventually, but uh, basically all the dates that can be happening for Hybrid Hell. He's in all Japan, so not doing much with him. At least this cycle. 
uh, for Junior Patu, like, yeah, a couple jobs that have dropped him down, but that's sort of what I got him here for, so not the end of the world. Uh, Loki, our world champion, has basically been built solidly, like, he's either low 50s or just about there, basically, ever in the US, aside from the wing room, which is weird, not a huge deal. Uh, Matt Seidel, who, you know, turned heel, as now Junior Heavyweight Champion. Decent jumps, um, you know, jobbing didn't seem to hurt him that much because it was job to the world champion, and he still gained a couple points, of, including three points in the dry state. So good stuff. Uh, Nigel McGuinness, again, uh, lost a couple points, uh, lost a point in Mid-Atlantic, but gained pretty much everywhere else. So again, slowly counting more over, especially in our regions. Uh, Simon Diamond. Again, solid guy. Like, you know, I honestly probably underuse him, but like, you know, because he's really good in the ring, he's a good Rojan agent, he's actually pretty damn charismatic. I just, you know, I don't know. I He just doesn't, like, he just doesn't pop to me, so I don't use him as much as I probably should. And then Killings, who is here for two dates, because uh, I made a deal with TNA, a talent deal, you know, mid, mid to high 60, so there you go. Star wise, we got uh, Chris Hero. Who's, yeah, in basically high 40s, everyone would really care about, and even getting slightly more over everywhere else. Like, he's actually damn over in, in, in the tri state. Like, he could be a main event guy in the tri state. Homicide, on the other hand, yeah, Homicide's been kind of, yeah, I mean, I, he got built up by, by the end of the year, but he's been doing a couple drop and stuff, so, but, you know, I can probably rebuild him here. Uh, Jason Cross. Again, we're about the same. Pretty much, um, he's dropped a little bit because the jobs he's done, but he's built up in other places. Um, so yeah, he evens out, you know, high 40s, mid 40s, so there you go. Uh, Jerry Lynn is sort of, like, he's out for the next nine months, so, like, you know, he was real low near the end of the year, but it's for rebuilt him up to the low 40s, so when he comes back, you know, he'll hopefully be a solid mid-card hand. And of course, a really great agent. A light bringer. A strong push built him up a little bit, but, you know, doing the job for the TV title and then doing a couple other jobs, you know, sent him back to basically in mid-card hell there, unfortunately. Uh, Michael Shane, just for, so you know, is pretty over. Um, probably a couple of big wins and he can be, like, a, in major star territory. Uh, Sponjo Dutt. Is up a couple points after getting, winning the big match and, you know, being at some decent angles. And last but not least, the Amazing Red, who's in a, going to be in a big match with Homicide, is actually, like, probably a couple big wins away from being, like, a bonafide top guy in the company, despite being the Amazing Red, who, like, can't talk. Well-known guys that we care about, let's see here, uh, Drew Clark, just so you guys know, like, you know, mid to low 40s. And Rick Gordy is, yeah, yeah. You know, I've quickly been building up, yeah, he's up the low low to mid 40s in southeast um up to the high 30s in Tri state and getting slowly over more over everywhere else and roger strong again weirdness because of where he's actually over so he's like in the southeast he's like actually a top top guy like i could probably main event a hero and strong match at, in a main event of a pay-per-view in a big show in the southeast um i might do that in the future because you know they're not gonna be team forever but regardless they're but he's in the low 30s everywhere else so there you go uh, better. Again, weird overness because of where he started out, but like slowly he's up to 40s in the Great Lakes, almost up to 50s in the Great Southeast. So there you go. And of course, really over in Puerto Rico and Hawaii. And I think that's about it for what you guys need to know. Uh, again, creative wise, top five is Danielson, Martin, Simon Diamond, Nitro, McGinnis, Loki. So, you know, makes sense basically. Uh, next big things is Puma, Michael Shane. Who's hot is ECMO, Loki, Homicide, Danielson, Nigel. Again, the guys I've been pushing. Uh, only who's not is Delirious because, and Jason Cross just because they had some bad uh, gimmicks to begin with. And honestly, I'm not sure with, with Cross, except I think it's just basically both bad gimmicks for them. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So, you know, if you've, you've enjoyed this, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, comment below on what you're liking and not liking. And of course, I'm always you know, helpful with feedback. I don't always, always respond or do what you guys want because I'm doing my own thing. Um, I think as a side note, as I think somebody mentioned uh, about like getting deals. Basically, I kind of forgot to do that, but I'm getting to do that. So hopefully I'll have a, be able to make a deal with either a Japanese or with your company in the next couple months. And then you know, go ahead and uh, get some like new random people to come in and work here now. Because like, yeah, the roster is sort of 
getting in that, like, I only have so many matches to make unless I do some heal turns, which, again, time for some other storytelling. Um, Gordy and Vetter were going to go over Lin and Sabu at the pay-per-view, and that was going to lead to a Sabu heel turn, and eventually a uh, quick claim Lin and Sabu feud, feud through this fall, and eventually, you know, Lin getting his match versus Karino in the summer. And, in at King of Kings, where it was supposed to happen in the first place, but none of that happened, and here we are. Um, because Lynn is injured. Oh, yeah, just so you guys know, Lynn is out for seven months, three weeks with the torn quad. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So, like I said, you know, uh, super nice for lots of DW 2020 content, including this series, my WW 1993 No Eric Bischoff series, uh, my Cornell vs. Week weekend series, which should return this weekend. Uh, fingers crossed, and of course my long-running WCW 2001 series, which is running headlong in the Star 2003. That's it for now, so we'll talk to you later, and have a good one. Adios.